If you've listened to this podcast for a while, you know that I'm obsessed with growing citrus indoors. (laughs) I named my indoor citrus plant, my indoor lime tree, Limey. He's a beloved member of the Growing Joy community. He was one of my first plants. And one of my first house plants, which I learned so many plant parent lessons on, like pruning, watering, and the importance of light. But plant friend, I would not recommend getting into growing citrus the way that I did five years ago. I bought Limey as an impulse buy in the clearance section of the garden center. I had no idea how to care for citrus indoors. I was living in 500 square feet in New York City. I didn't know how much light I was getting. And frankly, I wasted a bunch of time setting him up in the wrong conditions. And he was patient with me and flexed with me and didn't die on me, gave me some time to fix my mistakes. But citrus are a little picky with what they like. But once you get them set up in what they need, they will thrive indoors. You will be able to grow fruit indoors and harvest a lime and turn it into a mojito in your kitchen which is a super fun process that I highly recommend. Citrus episodes and my passion for citrus has been threaded through the many years of this podcast from the recent episode that I aired on the history of citrus in Italy for Italian American Heritage Month to the episode last year in which I shared the insane story about how I took Limey, the lime tree, on an airplane to rehome him with my mom in Florida. We talk about this a little bit in the interview today to updates on buying him and how I cared for him in the intros of the five years of these episodes. Limes, lemons, calamansi, kumquats, they could be marvelous plants to tickle all five of your senses and you can grow them indoors, but you need to know what you're doing. So today we celebrate my bumpy path as a citrus plant parent and ideally set you up for a much smoother path to indoor citrus joy with an episode dedicated entirely to how to grow citrus indoors and help them thrive so you can be plucking citrus fruit off a plant in your living room, harvesting it, and enjoying it in your next glass of lemonade. Welcome to the Growing Joy podcast, where we not only learn how to care for plants successfully, but how to simply and affordably use our plant babies to cultivate more joy in our lives. I'm Maria, author of Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness, speaker, podcaster, and most importantly, an epic plant killer turned happy plant lady. On Growing Joy, you'll find conversations about plant care, plant community, and wellness through the lens of plants. Hello, plant friends. Welcome. I hope you've had beautifully planty weeks. If you're new here, welcome. You're getting thrown into the deep end of my citrus fashion that our longtime listeners know about. If you're a longtime listener, welcome back. Thank you for continuing to show up to this podcast. I love you. But yes, today's podcast will hopefully save you some stress, some fallen leaves, some lost blossoms, and learn lessons from my mistakes in my six year journey of caring for citrus indoors. I've had both lemons and limes. I will link to the YouTube episode where I rehomed my lime tree with my mom in Florida and we got her multiple citrus plants. She has a citrus grove now. She's growing citrus down there in Florida. Limey's doing okay. He has a prime spot in her lanai. And you know, I have to say, Limey has been one of the most treasured plants in my houseplant collection. And I guess I call him a houseplant because I keep him indoors. But let's be real, plant friends. Citrus are not houseplants. (laughs) These plants need high quality of light, high quantities of light. And frankly, they're supposed to be outside soaking in Floridian rains and drinking up epic rainstorms. However, like I said in today's intro, you can do it. You can grow citrus indoors, but you need to know how to do it well. You need to set your plants up for success. You need to set yourself up for success. It's not a Sansevieria or like a low a low key plant that you can just throw in a corner and think it's going to grow. You You need to be prepared to bring that plant home. You need to be prepared to bring a citrus home in a way that you don't need to be prepared to bring other houseplants home. But I have to say, if you can care for citrus successfully indoors, they are a fabulous opportunity to grow joy because you can really engage most of your senses with this one plant. You can smell the intoxicating scent of citrus blossoms, which is so magical, I can't even stand it. You can eat the fruit that you grow and watch the fruit grow and get juicy in front of your eyes. You can feel the leaves and the spines. <laughs> citrus, many citrus have thorns or spines. Limey has scratched me many times, jolting me into the presence. The bursts of yellow and orange can be a beautiful pop of color amidst all of the sea of green foliage of your houseplant collection. 
And my favorite part, you can make mocktails with all the citrus that you grow because I'm a mocktail girly now, plant friends. And our guest today, Danny Trejo, has citrus juice in his blood. He grew up on a citrus farm in Florida, and now he's helping bring citrus directly to your door via his company, Via Citrus. He's also a long lost plant friend of mine. If you're a true OG listener, if you've been listening since 2017, you might know Danny and Via Citrus already because Danny sent me a citrus tree that I ended up killing (laughs) many years ago, which we will talk about in the interview. I'll let him be a part of that storytelling. But he's a great guy, super knowledgeable about citrus. This is a super specific deep dive episode. And just so you know, if at the end of the episode, you're interested in trying to grow your own citrus indoor, Danny has offered us a discount code exclusively for our community. We'll put it in the show notes. But it's been so fun to reconnect with him, my long lost plant friend. We hadn't spoken in like four years and it was such a delight to see his name pop in my inbox. And speaking of plant friends, I wanted to give a shout out to some new plant friends in the Growing Joy Garden Society, Carol M., Anne-Marie B., and Marissa G. Welcome. Welcome, plant ladies. I'm so happy that you're in the community. Thank you for supporting the show. Your subscriptions help me pay for the editor and the podcast manager and the community manager and all the amazing things that help this podcast churn out for you every week. If you don't know what the Growing Joy Garden Society is, it's my online platform available via computer, iOS, or Android app. It's algorithm and troll-free private community for our international plant friends to make new plant friends, propagate your plant care knowledge, and grow more joy in your life. And subscriptions to the community help support the show. If you are interested in joining, making some new plant friends, supporting the show, you can go to jointhegardensociety.com. Okay, Danny and I have a lot to cover helping you grow the citrus grove of your dreams indoors. So let's get to it. Danny, my long lost plant friend, it is so good to reconnect with you today. Thank you for having me on, Maria. I'm so excited to talk to you. We connected 100 years ago in 2018 when I was first getting into my passion for citrus you sent me Lemony Snicket, my lemon tree. And um, I feel like in the last couple of years, we kind of lost touch. So when I got an email from your marketing person at saying, hey, I don't know if you've ever heard of Danny Trejo, but he'd love to come on your show. I was like, Danny, of course he can come on my show. Yes, yes. It's been a little bit, uh, but glad to reconnect. I'd like to hear an update about Lemony Snicket. Yeah, well, You know, it's interesting. I'm so happy to hear that you are still singing Citrus's praises because my relationship with Citrus has been a very complicated one over the last couple of years. I feel like, so my audience knows I have Limey, my lime tree, and Lemony was, sadly, Lemony Snicket was my Meyer lemon tree. Lemony is no longer with us. Limey still is though. So Danny, I don't know if you saw this on Instagram, but I flew Limey to my parents' house in Florida. I rehomed Limey with my mom. Wow. Wow. (laughs) I brought him on the airplane with me like a real psycho. I had to apply to the state of Florida agriculture division for like- I was about to say, that's- I did it. With our quarantines, citrus quarantines right now. Yeah, I figured that's you definitely jumped some hurdles to get. uh, I did the thing. uh, Limey down. I was on the phone with the government. I had to get I called it Limey special passport. I had to get paperwork. So when I lived in New York City and I was in my 500 square foot apartment, Limey was my prize child, my little citrus. I had him under my Soltec grow light. I was growing limes. I was making mojitos with him. You added Lemony Snicket, generously sending me Lemony Snicket. And indoor citrus was a huge part of what brought me joy as a plant parent in New York City. And then in the pandemic, I moved four times in the pandemic. And it felt like every home I moved into got darker and darker and darker. And I just didn't have enough grow lights. So We had put Limey outside for the summer and then we brought him inside. And I just remember having a mental breakdown to my husband one day, weeping on the floor next to Limey. He was like so unhappy looking. He was so sad. He was not getting the light he needed in our dark ass house. And I was just like, I can't keep Limey alive anymore. I'm going to need to compost him. Like, I don't know what to do. And that's when we came up with this crazy idea to bring him to Florida But Lemony was the first to succumb to my multiple moves. He got spider mites and just didn't make it. I I couldn't salvage, couldn't salvage him. But man, do I love growing citrus. 
And especially if growing citrus indoors because the scent of citrus flowers is so incredible. And I remember when Limey lived in my house, like I'd wake up and go smell his blossoms and especially the Meyer lemons too. And so I'm excited to be reconnected with you because I think we have one more move under our belt. And once we do one more move, then I'm hoping to reinvigorate my passion for growing citrus. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We'll make sure that uh, you have a nice, br- bright, uh, lit and south facing window. Yeah. For your citrus trees or a nice patio out there that you could put uh, your citrus trees out there during the summer and bring them in during the winter. But yeah, I'm sorry to ha- hear about Lemony Snicket. I was really looking forward to hearing an update, but maybe we have to try a different variety for you. I know that growing citrus isn't always the best for the novice grower, but they are extremely fun to grow and they're extremely rewarding as well. They do require a little bit of green thumb, but it shouldn't really scare anybody off. I think Something like the calamansi plant is probably a little bit easier to grow, and it's a great first starter citrus is what I highly recommend for our customers who are growing citrus for the first time. Calamansi is a great one. I keep hearing calamansi over and over again. One of my friends said he grew up, it's a cultural thing for him, that he grew up with them, and he grew them from seed, actually, from one of his mom's trees. But um, yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think I fell into citrus because I did an impulse buy at a grocery, uh, sorry, at a nursery with Limey. And then I had to backfill and figure out how to care for citrus indoors in a reactionary position. But I think if you want to do citrus, you kind of just nailed it. It's a really fun plant to grow and it's actually not that hard to grow, but you do have to have the right conditions and the right setup. So listener, no fear, by the end of this episode, you will be empowered to grow the citrus grove of your dreams indoors. Before we dive into how to care for citrus indoors, Danny, I want to know why citrus? Like, why do you have a online company via citrus that you only sell citrus? Like, what's up with that? Where's this very hyper niche passion? Where does it come from? Yeah, I mean, it comes from my childhood, to be quite honest. My dad has been a citrus farmer, a citrus nursery man for over 40 years. He started when he was 16. uh, And he's still doing it. You know, my first memories were basically being out on the citrus farm, fertilizing with them, pruning, growing, grafting. I mean, those were my summer months growing on what was uh, back then that started as a nine acre farm in a small town in central Florida called Howie in the Hills to, you know, what he has now of over 200 acres and probably 70 acres of greenhouses full of citrus trees. Wow. Were you growing citrus when you moved out of Florida? Did you bring his citrus plants? Like how did building via citrus come to be? Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, So after um, going off to college at 18, to be quite honest, I didn't want to see another citrus tree in my life. So I thought, you know, I grew up in it, I worked in it, and that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, You know, I saw my dad working out in the hot sun every single day, every weekend trying to grow his business. And that's not something I was interested in. So I thought, you know, I went to a small school in Florida, got my undergraduate in finance, and uh, I went to New York thinking that I was going to be working on Wall Street. Mm. But while I was in New York, you know, I did miss it. I missed the uh, tropical weather that Florida offers and, and its citrus trees and the orange blossom smells that were completely surrounded I was completely surrounded by. And it's it was a unique experience that I don't think I thoroughly was proud of back then. I kind of want to get out of, but I looking back at it now, it's it's a unique experience that I'm glad I had in my life. So when I got up to New York, I went to the flower district to buy some plants and I saw my dad's plants there. Right. 28th Street, the famous 28th Street in New York City. Yes, exactly. Between 6th and 7th on 28th Street. So yeah, I was like, Dad, you know, your trees are here. You know, I grew up with them for over 18 years and I quickly recognized them. I was like, these are your trees. I know that they are. And, you know, and it kind of inspired me again to think about maybe starting something direct to consumer with citrus trees. You know, my dad grows these excellent trees, the products they already. And I think my entrepreneurship spirit it was like, maybe I can put a website together and and offer these trees to other people that don't know about them and educate people about growing citrus trees indoors. Because I was in New York, right? Not a lot of people have a big enough yard to put citrus trees outside. I was able to grow. I was living in Brooklyn at the time. I was able to grow my Meyer lemon tree indoors. Luckily, I was facing 
a south window and and harvested several lemons from that as well. So I knew growing citrus indoors was completely possible because I had you know the experience with it. Plant friends, I cannot handle the synergy of the ad supporters that we have for today's episode. Soltech Lights and Espoma Soil. If you want to grow citrus, Soltech and Espoma are the perfect partners to help you have thriving citrus indoors. So first, let's talk about Soltech. If you don't know, Soltech makes my favorite grow lights to grow all of my houseplants under. I have five grow lights from Soltech all over my house. And when I got Limey, my lime tree, and I realized I did not have enough light in my apartment to support him, I went and got a Soltech Aspect light. That is their pendant style light. You can install it and it just hangs from your ceiling with one screw. It's super easy to install. I put it over Limey and all of a sudden he was able to get the light that he needs. Now, Soltech makes multiple different types of grow lights. They have the aspect light. They have a new grow bar that you can put in a bookshelf. They have a grow bulb that you can put into a floor lamp. But all of their lights are high quality grow lights with a full spectrum light that mimics the sun. They're stylish. They fit in with your design aesthetic and they get your plants the light that they need to thrive. We discussed the importance of light for citrus today. And if you want to grow citrus and you don't have the high light that citrus need, you can get a Soltech Aspect Light and pop your citrus under the light and supplement your indoor lighting with a Soltech Light. Danny recommends six to eight hours of direct sunlight. When I had Limey under my Soltech Light, I had the Soltech Light go on for 12 hours and off for 12 hours. And I set it up with the timer that it came with and it was so easy. Also, if you're not interested in citrus, but you have a wide houseplant collection, I've got to tell you about their newest light. It's called the Grove, and it's a grow bar light. You can install it under countertops. You can install it in your bookshelf, in your Ikea grow shelves. It has touch dimming, touch on and off switches, and it's so easy to install. If you're on the fence about any Soltech lights, they have a 90-day guarantee and free shipping in the U.S. They will refund you no drama within that 90 days. So if you want to try a grow light, why not try Soltech and get 15% off because you're a listener of this show. Go to Soltech.com, check out all of the lights, figure out which one is the right one for you, and then use code BLOOM15 at checkout for 15% off. Once again, that's Soltech.com and code BLOOM15 at checkout for 15% off. And now the second perfect partner for this episode, Espoma Organic. Did you know that Espoma Organic has a soil specifically designed for citrus plants? Espoma Organic Cactus Mix is actually designed not just for cactus, but also succulents, palm, and citrus. Limey, my lime tree, is happily potted in Espoma Cactus Mix. He has been potted in Espoma Cactus Mix for years, and he's growing limes in Florida with Mama Faella as we speak. Espoma Organic Cactus Mix contains a rich blend of the finest natural ingredients and is enhanced with yucca extract and mycotone, their proprietary blend of mycorrhizae to ensure that your plants grow deeper roots and more beautiful blooms. And you need those blooms if you want to grow that fruit. Should you choose for citrus to be part of your growing journey, I highly recommend potting your citrus plant up with Espoma Cactus Mix and then feeding it with its citrus-specific fertilizer, which is called Citrus Tone. It's the perfect plant food for citrus, avocado, fruit, and nut trees. It's got a long-lasting, slow-release formula, so it makes fertilizing easy. It's 100% natural and organic, and it's safe for people, pets, and the planet. And because it's made in Espoma's state-of-the-art solar-powered manufacturing facility, consistency and quality are guaranteed. So for citrus, you're looking at Espoma cactus mix with Espoma citrus tone. But Espoma has a line of amazing fertilizers and potting mixes for whatever you're growing, whether it's indoors or outdoors. To check out all of the amazing products they make for indoor and outdoor gardeners, go to espoma.com and find your local Espoma dealer. Or you can click the link in the show notes and go to my Amazon storefront where I have a curated list of my Espoma favorites. That's amazing. And Via Citrus was born. I love it. And I think about my citrus trees and because I they were some of my first plants, which in hindsight was not the best idea. But I think about how much Limey specifically taught me. It's like Limey was the first plant I pruned and he was the first plant that got scale and he was the first plant that I harvested something from. Like all of those firsts, there's nothing like it. So... Let's see. You mentioned that there's a bunch of different types of citrus, and I know you recommended calamansi is great for the beginner. What types of citrus do you recommend for people to grow indoors? Are there citrus that are more lower light tolerant or all citrus need direct sunlight every day? 
the majority of the citrus that I grew up around, obviously, had the direct sunlight from our Florida sun, right? And we have to remember that citrus trees come from subtropical climates that are typically humid and have that direct sunlight. So when we bring them indoors or even to our patios, we're trying to mimic that environment again. And while it's really tough to do that indoors, it's not impossible. And some varieties do better than the others. Like I was mentioning earlier, the calamansi is probably the best starter citrus tree that I would recommend. They bloom year round, they fruit year round. They're not as temperamental as like a, a lemon might be. The key lime is also a great option as with your experience with uh, limey. And then I would also mention like kumquats in there. It's nothing that we currently offer right now. It's something that we're planning on, on potentially offering kumquats, but I've heard kumquats do well indoors as well. Mm -hmm. And when you think about different types of citrus, this is also just like an odd fascination that I have. One of my favorite books is called The Land Where Lemons Grow. Uh, do you know that book? I'm not familiar with it. Oh my God, it's so good. It's about the history of citrus in Italy. And I actually just interviewed the author on the month prior to this podcast. But there are so many different types of citrus, the finger limes and the the finger lemons. Like I know on your website, you have, I think it's called Buddha's hands and the striped, yes. the pink lemons and- The variegated, the uh, variegated lemon, the variegated calamondons. Yeah, I mean- it, What's this red lime on your website? It's It's sold out right now, but what's the red lime? Red lime, I like to offer different varieties that are typically not available at your local garden centers. So I've been asking my dad to kind of uh, introduce and try out new varieties. We started out with the Australian finger lime, which was very interesting. It's very cool, very thorny. So, you know, be careful if, um, if you have kids. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not for if you have small children around. Yeah. The finger lime is really fun to grow. Uh, they're very popular among the uh, culinary community because I guess they use it like citrus caviar is what they call it. You know, instead of using fish caviar, they call it uh, citrus caviar. So within the culinary uh, world, they're very popular. And then we introduced the red lime, something a little bit different. It's also known as a rank fur lime. And I think it's a hybrid between a lime and an orange. So it's a hybrid citrus. So it's it's very, very very good. It's more of like a sweet lime than it is a tart key lime. And then we introduced the uh, Buddha's hand. Buddha's hand, again, was, you know, something you typically don't see. It's not entirely edible, I would say. It's not like a fruit. There's no like juice or pulp in it. It's mostly like pith. And a lot of cultures use it for the smell. Again, it's used in the culinary world for various types of food dishes as well. But it has a really, really great, unique aesthetic to it. It's it's interesting. It does look like fingers just coming out like of... They look like hands. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> so those are kind of fun to grow. Um, and then the past couple of weeks, we just introduced our uh, yuzu uh, tree as well. Um, and that's <gasps> been in the works for about a year. So we actually got the budwood from the University of Florida. This is something that I asked my dad to do specifically for Via Citrus. Um, so he's been working on it for over a year. And this is our first, um, you know, release of the Yuzu Citrus on here. So those th these are brand new. Wow. By the time this episode airs, I'll have gotten back from my trip to Italy. And I am hoping that one of the most famous citrus nurseries in all of Italy is 30 minutes from one of the towns that we're visiting. And so I've pitched my husband... Ooh on a half day trip. And it's a botanical garden that's filled with citrus, all sorts of freaky citrus. And I'm like, please, <laughs> please, can we go there? That's like what a nerd I am on our vacation. I'm like, can we go to the citrus botanical <laughs> garden, please? Yeah. Where can we follow you to, to see your journey on seeing the citrus? I, I'm personally interested. In yes. It. Well, on Instagram, I'll be sharing my Italian journey. Perfect. So growing joy with Maria. Shout out, but uh, we'll see because we're doing this interview before I go to Italy. So we'll see if our schedule allows for it. But I'm really hoping, I'm hoping we make it. So, okay, well, I love the idea of growing yuzu indoors because I drink a lot of cocktails with yuzu juice in them. Okay, so let's get into plant care. Say we either order on Via Citrus or we go to our local garden center, we get a Meyer lemon, we get a key lime, we get some sort of citrus tree and we bring it home, what do we need in our home in order for the citrus plant to thrive? Yeah, great questions. In order for your citrus tree, your brand new citrus tree that you're bringing indoors to thrive, obviously direct sunlight, at least 
at least six to eight hours of direct sunlight. So south, southwest facing window, perfect. During these summer months right now, if you can put that out, citrus tree out in your patio, we have a balcony that's uh, outside, even better. Again, they're subtropical trees. They want to be outside as much as possible. During the colder months, I tell all of our customers, anything below 40, bring them indoors. We want to start transitioning them probably late fall, early winter. But definitely, if you have a freeze or a frost, a cold front coming in that's going to be below 40 degrees, bring them in. You don't want them being out there for several hours below that because they will get damaged. And when you say transitioning, what does that entail? Yeah, so citrus trees are a bit temperamental. They don't like to be moved quite a lot. So during this transition, I would, if it's outside in direct sunlight, I would move it into a shaded area. And I, for a couple weeks, at least, at least two to three weeks in your patio in your shaded area before you bring it in, inside. During that time, you know, you can make sure that you don't have any spider mites that you're bringing indoors, any leaf miners that you're bringing indoors or anything that you don't want indoors that's been outdoors. And you can do that by spraying it with neem oil or insecticidal soap as well during that transition. And then ultimately leaving it in one spot, hopefully for the winter and not constantly moving it. Because uh, one of the things I've noticed that moving citrus trees specifically indoor from one spot to the other, they'll start to get stressed out and they'll drop their leaves. And this is where that, what I had originally said, it's not that they're super hard to care for, it's that you need to know what you're doing. So when I was putting Limey indoors and outdoors, he went outdoors in the summer and then he came indoors and went right under my grow light. I had the prime spot for him under my Soltec light and that's where he lived in the winter. Because if he's used to getting so much light outside in the summer, you need to give him some sort of moderately adequate amount. It's such a shock for those plants to go through. And I think when I first got citrus, I had him in bright indirect light. Then I realized I needed bright light. So I put him in my window. Then I realized I still didn't have enough light. So then I got a grow light. Like it took me a minute. And I think that kind of set him up for failure. And I learned, you know, so learn learn from me, listeners. And also just one other note, If you are transitioning plants indoors and outdoors, I just released an episode a couple of weeks ago about, I think the title is something like how to transition your plants indoors for winter. So if you're confused about that, you can go listen to that whole episode that's dedicated to making sure that you do this without bringing pests indoors. But anyway, so you were saying six to eight hours of bright light. The other thing is plant friends, Danny is saying a Southern or a Southwestern facing window, but also it needs to be unobstructed. If you are living in New York City, I had an apartment once where I had huge southern facing windows, but I had an even bigger building outside of those southern facing windows and that building blocked the sun. So I had the equivalent of a northern facing window in this apartment. So you need to make sure that the sun is shining its rays onto the leaves of your plants for six to eight hours. And if you don't have that, if you have an eastern facing window or a northern facing window, what would you recommend, Danny? Do you have grow light specifications? Yeah, I definitely I would invest in a grow light. We offer the uh, Soltec Aspect large size light. Shout out. We love you, Soltec. <laughs> yeah, I personally use that as well. I mean, I moved every year that I was in New York City, so I didn't always have a, of a southern facing window. So I have personal experience using that Soltec Aspect light. And it works wonders and it looks amazing as well. Yeah. And Soltech, we have a coupon code in the show notes, but also just some guidelines for if Soltech is out of budget. A few other things that I've realized just through putting citrus and so many plants under grow lights is make sure that whatever grow light you get, you read the manual that comes with it because you need to put the grow light a certain amount of inches above your plant. So that was another thing that I had the Soltech light when I started out with Limey. But I realized that I had put my Soltech light way too high above him. And so he wasn't getting the intensity of light that he needed. So I realized I had to lower the Soltech light to bring more of that DLI, which is the daily light integral of light that a citrus plant needs. We have tons of episodes on this plant, friends, if you need to dive deeper into it. But just make sure that whatever grow light you get, you read the instructions and you make sure that you're positioning your citrus tree under that grow light to the dimensions of grow. And any grow light you buy should have instructions for this. 
Yeah, and it's uh, that's that's a great that's an excellent point. It also varies by the type of plant you're growing. So look definitely look at the instructions and what it recommends for citrus because if it's definitely too close, you're going to burn the tree, and if it's too high, it's not going to receive enough of that light that you're talking about as well. Another thing I would recommend is I've had customers email our help desk and they're like, I have it on a grow light and I actually don't turn the grow light off because they need, you know, at least six to eight hours, you mentioned. So I'm giving it 24 hours of grow light. And I'm like, no, (laughs) definitely not. These plants are somewhat like us. They need a sleep. So they need a sleep cycle as well. So you definitely don't want to overdo it on the grow light. But, you know, any great grow light will have excellent instructions in the manual and, and definitely follow those guidelines. Yeah, for sure. I usually keep it like 12 on, 12 off. And I use my grow lights as additional light in my house. So I have them turn on when I wake up in the morning and then I have them turn off when I go to sleep at night. And the running joke in my house is like at 10 o'clock when the aspect goes off, it's like, okay, I used to say, good night, (laughs) Limey. You know, when (laughs) Limey would go to sleep, when the Soltec light would turn off. So I just think that was just kind of a grow light crash course for anybody who is new to grow lights. But you know, if you're growing citrus and you really do want to get a big crop of fruit and you're growing it indoors, citrus is like a tomato plant. It's like you need, it's an edible plant and it needs photosynthesis because it needs to make as much energy so it can make those buds and then support those buds to turn into fruit and then grow the fruit. So, you know, it's a highlight plant. It's not highlight optional if you want your citrus to thrive. And I learned that the hard way. So... Once again, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, when you're talking about uh, fruit and blooms as well, another thing I'd highly recommend and what typically goes wrong initially with first-time citrus growers is improper watering. And citrus trees require consistent and deep watering. But overwatering can lead to root rot and other like fungal diseases. And underwatering on the other side can lead to like drought and stress. And that's when you see, you know, leaves dropping as well. So having a good balanced watering schedule is key to growing citrus. And I wish it was as scientific as saying, you know, two cups of water every other day. And but unfortunately, it's not with citrus. With citrus trees, you really have to monitor and it it really depends on many variables. You know, is it outside? Is it inside? How much direct sunlight it's getting? What kind of humidity do you have around it? Is it blooming? Does it have fruit on it? Like all of these are variables that are going to change the watering schedule of your citrus tree. If they're blooming and, and have fruit, they're going to require more water, right? It's, it needs more nutrients to produce those blooms and maintain that fruit. During the winter months when we have our HVAC systems on and the air is dry, you know, it's going to dry out a lot quicker. So, you know, you need to monitor a lot, monitor a little bit more than, than what you're used to. But what I usually tell people and recommend people, you can visually see it. Typically, when a citrus tree needs to be watered, the leaves are cupping up quite a bit. Usually when they're overwatered, they're kind of bending over. And then maybe you'll see some brown spots on the tips of the leaves, which is a sign of root rot, which you don't want. But the best way to do it is just do a simple finger test. Touch the top two inches of the soil. If it feels dry to the touch, definitely water it all the way through. It's still pretty moist. Just leave it another day and check out it the next day. But uh, yeah, I would say the biggest hurdle of growing citrus is figuring out what their watering schedule is. I feel like I am in a cloud right now, plant friends. Do you know why I feel like I'm in a cloud? It's because I am wrapped in the cozy embrace of a cashmere outfit from one of my new favorite clothing brands, Quince. I have been wanting to hit reset lately, plant friends, especially with my daily work from home attire. I went through my work from home in your pajamas era, and now I want to enter my work from home in your cute, cozy, comfortable outfits era. And this is when I found Quince because they are so fairly priced and the quality of their clothes and their home goods is insane. Like I said, I am wearing their Mongolian cashmere sweater right now and it feels like I am wrapped in the coziest cloud and they also make throw blankets with this Mongolian cashmere. Let me describe my outfit to you. I feel so comfortable and elegant at the same time. So I, like I said, I'm wearing one of their Mongolian cashmere sweaters. Plant friends, they're priced at $50. A cashmere sweater for $50. Oh my gosh, it is so comfortable. It is so breathable and it comes in so 
so many colors. I'm wearing the burgundy one, but I also have my eye on their spicy mustard one and their Everglade green one because obviously I need to match my plants. I'm also rocking their ultra soft bike shorts. And let me tell you something about these shorts. They feel like butter. All Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the saving on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. So give your closet and your home the refresh it deserves with Quince. Go to quince.com slash joy to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash joy for free shipping and 365 day returns quince.com slash joy i'm dr laurie santos host of the happiness lab podcast making new friends and maintaining old friendships is a great way to boost your happiness there are lots of sources of well-being standing around you you just have to tap into them but sadly we don't always feel up for being sociable If I was approaching a stranger, my heart would race. I'd feel like I was going to throw up. I just had so much anxiety around it. So in a new season of the show, I'll tackle how to make firm friendships firmer, right through to the joy you can find in talking to total strangers. I'm very much enjoying your animal print scarf, madam. You look wonderful. The steps to becoming more social might surprise you. But trust me, they're things you can introduce into your daily routine right away. I adore your purple hair, madam. It pops. So listen to The Happiness Lab on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your shows. Fall is here, winter is coming, which always makes me want to do a little refresh, a little reset, get cozy, especially when it comes to my home. When it kind of feels like I'm prepping to hibernate up here in the woods of New York. Um, But cozy, luxe, home good items can be expensive. That's when I discovered that Quince, the company that I've been loving for their affordable and luxe clothing, also has well-priced home goods that elevate my home. So you've heard me talk about the gorgeous Mongolian cashmere sweater that I have been living in. It feels like I am wrapped in a cloud. But Quince also has the Mongolian cashmere throw blankets and pillow covers. Could you imagine a Mongolian cashmere throw blanket wrapped around you as you binge Gilmore Girls or whatever other show you watch in the winter? Plus, they have luxury quality home goods like their European linen and luxury organic sateen sheet sets. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. You heard me right, 50 to 80% less. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices along with premium fabrics and finishes. When I tell you I live in the biker shorts and cashmere sweater that I have from theirs, I mean, I, I wear them too often than I should admit. Give your home the refresh it deserves with Quince. Go to quince.com slash joy to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince spelled Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash joy for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash joy. Okay, so it sounds like for the soil, you want the top couple of inches of the soil to dry out and then replenish. So you don't want that whole pot to dry out. You also mentioned deep watering, and I think that's important. So you want to water until water comes out the bottom of the pot. Don't just give it a little drink every day. If you think about it, these plants in Florida, in these tropical regions that they thrive in, they're getting insane downfalls of storms of water. And then it dries out. It gets really hot and the soil dries out and then it rains again. So you got to replicate that. We got to mimic that, right? Yeah. We got to mimic those subtropical climates when growing citrus because that's what they're used to. But yeah, and then also when you're when you're watering thoroughly, make sure that you have the right soil, right? You need to have the right soil on there as well because you don't want soil that retains water because that again, they're in between like, no, this is too wet or no, this is too dry if the soil just dries out too quickly. So you know, whatever soil you look at, make sure you read the back that it's also for citrus. I don't know if you have any recommendations or any brands that, that you recommend, Maria, with your plants, but just make sure that they have citrus listed on there for the soil. And then the second thing I would say is um, the potting. 
for your pots, make sure there's a the drainage, there's a drainage hole underneath it. I know sometimes we're tempted to kind of put rocks at the bottom with soil to kind of create that layering. It can work, but you're just making it a little bit harder on yourself, I would say. Drainage is key with when it comes to citrus. Yeah, I always kept my citrus in nice, cheap terracotta pots, you know, uh, with the holes in the bottom. The terracotta, I feel like for an over, I was an over waterer in New York City because I was with my plants every day. So the terracotta, I felt like was a built in barrier because it can kind of absorb water if you give if, if you give a plant too much water and it was easy to pop them up, you know, because they're so affordable. So yeah, and also obviously shout out Espoma Organic. I've kept all of my citrus in there. Citru- they have a citrus specific soil. And then also I wanted to ask you, they have a citrus specific fertilizer. So fertilizing plants. So we've got our watering, we've got our light. When do you fertilize citrus? Is it when they're blooming or when they're not blooming? I try to make it as simple as possible for fertilizing. So we also offer soil and fertilizer, pre-measured fertilizer for our trees on our website. And try to make it as simple as possible. It's pre-measured. And I recommend on around Memorial Day and around Labor Day. So twice a year with our citrus packets that we have. Try to make it as simple as possible so that anybody without a green thumb can figure out our fertilizing as well. Okay, cool. But there's no rule of thumb of like when you see a citrus plant starting to bud, you should start fertilizing or anything like that. No, I think um, if you start to see some uh, um, yellowing of the leaves quite a bit, it's usually a sign of nutrient deficiency. That's usually a time when you you need to be fertilizing. And another rule of thumb, I would say, is avoid uh, fertilizing in the winter. Citrus kind of slows our growth quite a bit in the wintertime. So, you know, it's not really taking advantage of that fertilizer during the wintertime. So we recommend usually Memorial Day and Labor Day are easy days, remember, for fertilizing. Yeah, I feel like my rule of thumb with fertilizing for anything is fertilize in the growing season. When the plant is growing and it needs more nutrients, you should give it more nutrients. And then when it takes a nap, you can just give it a break. So dormancy, what should we expect during the winter with our citrus plants? Yeah, citrus really don't go dormant. I mean, if you remember, they're they're subtropical plants. So in the cold months, especially if you're if you're growing them up north uh, in New York like we were, they definitely slow down their growth in the colder months. So as the colder days get shorter, they need to conserve their energy. Definitely, definitely, definitely do not prune in the early winter or any of the winter months okay. because they need their leaves to catch as much of that direct sunlight as possible in the winter months. And, you know, their leaves are like uh, solar panels. That's how they mm-hmm. are able to photosynthesize that direct sunlight into energy for them to grow. So what I would recommend in the winter months is not to prune, but also maybe when you're keeping them indoors early in the winters, clean out those leaves. They're just like solar panels. So the best way for them to work properly is to make sure that they're cleaned out and keeping them indoors or stuff indoors gets dusty sometimes instead of the leaves. This company I just found, female founded, I think they're called We Are the Wild. They make gloves that are towels, but it's like towel gloves and they're specifically for cleaning the leaves. So you just like put the glove on and then you just like pinch the thing. So they're in brute to me. I'm so excited to try them. I'll have to check them out. Yeah. 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 So you mentioned pruning. Why do we prune and when do we prune our citrus trees? I'd recommend pruning probably early spring, like late winter, early spring. I mean, this is springtime is when like the citrus trees are going to thrive completely. So pruning, I'd recommend it's necessary to remove any like dead or diseased branches that you might have, but it really promotes healthy growing of that tree. You know, people always ask me, how big do these plants get? How big do these citrus plants get? Uh, You can see one behind me. And I basically tell them they can get as big as you want. Sometimes they have an offshoot that's humongous and it's just really tall and it's more than anything else around it. As much as we're excited that it has this uh, shoot that looks amazing and, and it's growing and it's thriving, I usually recommend them to prune it to size with along with what everything else that you see around it. So that way it can continue to branch out and fully fill out and look like a beautiful, healthy plant that it is. But um, yeah, I would say, again, avoid pruning 
in the winter months and do most of your pruning uh, in the spring and summer. To trigger more growth. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. I remember when I bought Limey, he had three stems. I mean, he was $19 in the clearance section of this nursery. I don't know what I th- I was thinking buying him. He had three stems. They were so long. And I thought it looked really cool. But then I realized, oh, a lime tree isn't supposed to look like that. A lime tree isn't just supposed to have three stems. And I remember being so scared to prune him. But multiple friends of mine who had grown citrus were like, you have to cut that tree in half. Like you have to prune that tree. And I remember being so scared the night that I did it, but I was like, I'm going to do it. And I took the jump and I, you know, he had this one really long stem and I think I cut it in half or I cut a third of it off. And lo and behold, when you prune, you trigger that lateral growth. And all of a sudden, all of these other stems started coming in. And it was like a miracle. It wasn't a miracle. It's nature. I just didn't know how nature works. And now, you know, this is something I'm very well acquainted with. But I don't think I'll ever forget the feeling of awe that that first pruning of Limey gifted me and really getting to watch pruning at work. And then it was like this routine every spring, I would cut him back every year. It was like, okay, we're working on getting him bushier and bushier instead of that, just like three spikes, three spikes with some leaves and one lime on them. You know, it just looks fuller. It looks richer. It looks, I mean, it just, and I think the plant's happier too. I mean, it's kind of hard at first to cut off those branches because you're like, this is my new growth. It looks great. Mm -hmm. But keeping them pruned back is also healthy for them. And, you know, it makes the tree a little bit more balanced. And as they grow fruit, you know, your tree's not going to be leaning one way or the other because you have an offshoot that has all the fruit on it and it's, you know, throwing everything out of balance. What about humidity? Yeah. Again, subtropical, they love humidity in the winter months. I recommend at least at a minimum, you know, spraying with water your plant as much as you can every time you water it at least. But having a humidifier next to it is also a huge plus, especially some of our uh, New York apartments that I was in were completely dry. I couldn't regulate the heat on them, right? So it would dry out completely. So definitely recommend a humidifier in the winter months for those cold areas. Yeah, with humidity, I have stopped spraying the leaves because I found that spraying and having the water sit on the leaves, if it doesn't evaporate, can promote fungal stuff. My personal practice, I found personally, the only way to really increase humidity for me has been running a humidifier. I got really nerdy about humidity a couple of years ago, and I got hygrometers for all of my different rooms and I was measuring. And I feel like the only way I was really able to make like a significant difference because I live in the woods. My house gets 14% humidity in the winter. That's not good for humans. That's not good for plants. That's not good for my bird. And so I was like, okay, this is unacceptable. So we're going to change things. What about common troubleshooting? So what do you see the majority of your customers that struggle with their plants? What are they writing in about? And how can we set our listeners up for success to not be struggling with citrus? Like what about curling leaves? I remember I had a lot of that in the beginning. Yeah, it's the number one thing I would say is is figuring out the watering schedule. When the leaves are curled up like that, it's something's off. Whether curling out or curling in, it's either overwatering or underwatering with that. So watering is probably the number one thing, uh, the most common issue with citrus plants that I get. Another thing besides what we talked about, I would I would say is patience as well. It takes a little bit for that tree to fully feel acclimated into its new home, right? Because it's been in central Florida in a greenhouse with humid and tropical and, and it's shipping to, you know, New York or some of the Southeast or even the West Coast as well. Uh, it's going to take a little bit to get acclimated into its its new home. So, you know, you might not see blooms right away. You might not see fruit the first year, but that's okay. I think the beauty of this of is to keep trying and keep trying and eventually it will bloom and it will fruit once it finds that perfect environment. This just reminded me, you know, the year after year thing. I get listeners sometimes asking if I can I grow a citrus from a seed of a lemon that I currently have? Great question. The short answer is yes, but there are some nuances. The seeds that you're planting that you got from your fruit at your local grocery store isn't always going to produce the variety of the fruit that you just uh, ate from seed. So it's not true to seed. So it's not true to seed, exactly. So it can be. It will just take like 
five plus years for it to actually fruit and maybe a little bit longer to actually produce that variety. Sometimes it won't even produce that variety at all. So, you know, that's why um, grafting or cuttings are more are very popular right now when it comes to that, because, you know, you get the variety that you want, you get it to fruit a lot quicker, to bloom a lot quicker than planting a, an orange or a lemon seed in, at home. Yeah, it reminds me of the avocado seeds that everybody grows too. When you first get into plants, you, you know, you root yeah. an avocado seed, which is so fun. It's so fun to yeah. put it there and see it root and see it shoot. And you learn so much about plants. But the reality is you're not going to see an avocado for a really long time. Unless you graft it. Right. Unless you graft it. So talk to me about grafting. What is grafting and what should people know about grafting, especially if they're in a local nursery and they might be coming up against a grafted tree? Yeah, I think a grafted tree is a great option. So grafting is, you know, think about uh, the citrus plants have a rootstock on them and a rootstock can have various features. It could be a cold hardy rootstock. It can be a, a semi dwarf rootstock or dwarf rootstock. And what you're doing is grabbing that variety that you have, whether it's a, a navel orange or, or a Meyer lemon or a key lime, and you're grafting it onto that rootstock. And with that rootstock, you get to skip a lot of the phases that if you were just to plant them by seed, right? So again, you'll get them to grow quicker. You'll get them a little bit, they'll be a little bit less uh, disease prone based on the rootstock. And then also you'll get them to fruit a lot quicker and fruit the variety that you grafted on there. So something that my dad did on his farm was actually he did this cocktail tree where on one rootstock he had a lemon branch and an orange branch and a grapefruit branch, you know, and it wow. was pretty cool to, to kind of see as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can get creative with with grafting. So grafting is a very interesting concept. And are your trees grafted? The trees that we sell on Via Citrus are through citrus cuttings. So it's okay. a different type of cultivation. I'm sure you're familiar with citrus cuttings where you, you're basically just kind of grabbing a small little branch of the variety that you want already and getting that to grow. So the varieties we sell on Via Citrus are all citrus cuttings. We are looking to potentially do grafted varieties. They're usually a lot taller than they are bushier. But uh, it's something that we might potentially because, you know, some varieties do better on on grafted rootstocks and some varieties do a lot better on the cutting. So, you know, the Kalamandans, the the Myers, the Key Limes, some of the Kumquats do a lot better on cuttings and some of your other varieties do better on on the grafted uh, cultivation process. Man, Key Lime Pie is my favorite dessert. I would love to grow Key Limes. Here's a random question. I'm obsessed with blood oranges because they're so nutritious for you. They're like a superfood. Do you ever see blood? Or Does your dad grow blood oranges? I feel like I've never seen a blood orange plant before. Yeah, that's uh, one of the varieties uh, my dad definitely grows. You know, we're thinking about rolling out uh, navels and red navels. Red navels is, is another name for a blood orange as well. But blood oranges are so interesting. I remember as a little kid going out, we used to take care of this orange grove that was full of red navels. And they get really, really dark red during the winter months. I don't know if it's like the cold weather or something has has that effect specifically with the uh, blood oranges. But I just remember, you know, driving through there, it would be really cold and cutting up a blood orange. And I'm just like, wow, this is insane. This is, you know, as a kid, it was amazing. And the nutrition in it, like that red, whatever makes it red is a crazy antioxidant. And there's like all sorts of oh, interesting wow. studies. Aware. Yeah, there's all sorts of interesting studies about like pure blood orange juice and what it can do for your health. And I, once again, I read about it in this book that I'm obsessed with. And I've just been like fixated on blood oranges, but I've never seen the plants in in local nurseries. And I would assume those are larger plants and they require probably extra light. I'm actually going to do a little bit more research on on what we can offer here because my dad has all kinds of varieties, right? And I just try to keep the, the website as simple as possible and introduce new varieties here and there. But I'm also interested if your listeners, maybe they can reach out to me and and see what they're interested in. I know there's a bunch of exotic varieties of citrus out there. I think, like I mentioned, the Australian finger lime was one that I had never grown up with or ever heard of. And when I, my dad told me he had, and I was like, what? Why? <laughs> People aren't going to recognize this. Yeah. You know, and he's like, no, well, just give it a try and see how it works. And I was just, and we sold out of them. 
so yeah, reach out to me if, if you have any other um, varieties that you'd like to see listed on Via Citrus. I'd like to hear from everybody. Oh, that's so fun. So write in, write into Danny and uh, let him know what you want to grow. I've already put my request for blood oranges in. Okay, one last question about plant care. Once the plant buds, what do I need to do to get the buds to turn into fruit? Because sometimes I've noticed like there's so many blossoms and I think, oh, if there's five blossoms on one bud, should I remove four to give that one bud the best chance of growing into a fruit? What do I need to know about once the plant starts to bud? How do I get it cross the finish line to become the delicious fruit that I want to put in my margarita? Yeah, that's one of the uh, that's one of the common questions I actually forgot. So I'm glad you brought it up. You know, a lot of people are upset that they have a bunch of blooms. They see a bunch of blooms on the calamansi plant or, or their key lime plant or their lemon plant, and then they might get like one fruit out of it. Right. So it's, you know, they think they did something wrong. And what's really happening is that, you know, the citrus tree knows naturally what it can sustain and what it can grow based on, you know, the nutrients and its environment that we're putting it and giving it. So, you know, if you might see 20, 30 blooms on your calamansi plants, but, uh, you know, you only get 10 pieces of fruit on it, or even while it's going from bloom to young fruit, you might see some of that young fruit drop off. And it might be because, you know, it knows that it can only sustain so much of it based on, you know, how often we're fertilizing it, or if we fertilize it, how we're watering it. And it can be, you know, it might not have enough leaves to photosynthesize to to maintain those blooms and fruits as well. So, you know, it's part of the natural process. I wouldn't, I don't personally knock off blooms. I don't knock off fruit. I feel like the plant itself figures that out for me. And I just let nature kind of take its course. Okay. And um, enjoy the smells. Enjoy the scent of all those blossoms while you can before oh they fall God. off. That's like yes. the best part. It's even better than the fruit. Yes. Now, before we end, I know that you are so sustainably minded. And I know that you've been working so hard on this other venture that you're also offering on your website. But I'm so curious because you know, right now I'm not in my citrus era because of the nature of my home, but I'm in my pot collecting era. So right now I can't buy a citrus from you, but I could potentially buy some of your pots. Can you tell us about this new pot invention of yours? Yes. So growing and selling these citrus trees, we sell them in in grower's pots. It's the simplest thing for us to kind of ship out and quickly ship out because we already grow them in those grower's pots. and, And that's how we can quickly get them to our customers. And everybody's always asking, you know, what pot should I step it up to? What pot do you recommend? And I wanted to offer something that was, you know, fully sustainable on it. It's something that I'm passionate about. It's why we keep most of our packaging without any type of plastic, plastic wrapping around the pot. So if you get a little bit of soil spillage within the box, as UPS kind of takes it along to your home, uh, you might get some soil spillage in there, but it's all contained in there. Just put it back in the pot. It's, I promise you it's going to be fine. But as everybody was kind of asking us, well, pots, why didn't we offer pots or any decorative pots? I wanted to offer something that was more sustainable. So I've been working with this uh, sustainable manufacturing company in Germany. So our pots are completely manufactured in Germany, and they're made out of 100% recycled plastic. I wanted to avoid greenwashing as much as possible. I'm not sure if you heard about greenwashing, but it's it's basically where companies tell us that, uh, you know, this is a recycled drinking bottle, but it might be only 5 to 10%, right? Mm-hmm. There's only a certain percentage of that. And the truth is, it's a lot cheaper to manufacture virgin plastic than it is to collect, uh, wash, assort, uh, and and remelt back uh, recycled plastic. So yes, they're a little bit more expensive than your traditional plastic plants. But the one behind me, I'm not sure if your listeners are viewing, but you know they can check out our website at, at repots.com or they're also available at viacitrus.com. We have two products. The first one is a maritime plastic pot. It's made out of completely recycled maritime rope or commercial fishing nets. The company we work with has a program that goes out and collects these uh, fishing nets from commercial fishers, melts it down, and we mold them into pots. The second one, the one that's behind me, is made out of recycled plastic. Again, it's 100% recycled plastic and upcycled denim. 
scraps uh, from a denim manufacturing company that we go in there and collect their their denim uh, scraps from. So this one has like a light blue hue to it. They're all individually different because, you know, there's all kinds of denim kind of uh, marbled through, uh, you know, the plastic on there. So it's got like this 80 denims look to it, uh, which I, I really, really love. It's so cool. I'm happy to um, send you, you know, the two varieties that we have on here as well, as well as your customers. Um, you know, maybe we can figure out some type of discount for them as well. Yeah, for sure. So where can people find you? And what is the special discount you're offering us today? Yeah, so you can find me on our website, viacitrus.com, for our pots, repots.com. You can find us on Instagram, at via citrus. Send us a message. I'm pretty good at responding within 24 hours on there. Or you can also email us at help at viacitrus.com. More than happy to help anybody that is growing citrus, has a couple of questions as well. I would recommend if you need help growing citrus to send us a picture, maybe a couple of pictures of your plant and its current situation. That definitely helps instead of describing it on there and I have to like imagine or picture what's happening on there. Pictures are a huge help when diagnosing what exactly we can help you with on your growing your citrus trees. As far as the discount, I'd like to extend a discount to your listeners on both of our websites uh, by using the coupon code GROWINGJOY. We'd like to offer a 10% discount on all of our products. Woohoo! So if you want to go get yourself a citrus, you know, get yourself a citrus from Via Citrus, pot it up in a Spoma citrus mix and put it under a Soltec grow light. It's like one stop shopping with this episode. I can't believe how beautifully this all worked out. Well, it's so fun to be reconnected with you. I'm so happy to hear that Via Citrus is still alive and thriving and blossoming. And I can't wait till we move so that I can hit you up for a bunch of citrus to start my indoor or maybe my patio citrus grove, depending on what climate we end up moving to. <laughs> TBD. Gives me enough time to figure out if we can have a blood orange ready a for A blood you orange. <gasps> that would be amazing. <laughs> oh my God. Make my dreams come true, Danny. Please give me that blood orange. We'll try our best. Yeah, this has been so fun. And I'm also, I'm so excited. I know those sustainable pots. That's something my listeners write me about all the time. So I'm so excited to see how repots grows. And I can't wait to get my hands on some to test them out. Thank you for having me on here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Danny. It was so fun reconnecting with this plant friend, my long lost plant friend. I'm so happy to hear that Via Citrus is still going strong. Like he said, it's going to be code Growing Joy to get 10% off a citrus tree of your own. At the time we recorded this episode, I wanted to tell you a couple of different types of citrus that are on the Via Citrus website. I can't guarantee. They'll be on the website by the time this episode comes out. There might be extra different types of trees by the time the episode comes out. But they've got calamansi, Meyer lemon, key lime, ponderosa lemon, those Australian finger limes that we talked about, kumquat, and yuzu citrus. I'm particularly interested in that yuzu because I love a yuzu martini. So I bet I would love like yuzu lemonade. But anyway, if you're interested in getting a citrus tree and you want to order them online, you can go to viacitrus.com and use code GROWINGJOY at checkout for a discount. Thanks, Danny, for hooking us up. We appreciate you. And thank you to our sponsors. Like I said in the ad break, I don't think the sponsors have ever been so aligned accidentally for the topic of an episode, but Soltech Solutions are the grow lights that I have Limey under and the Espoma Organic Cactus Mix and Citrus Tone are what I pot and feed my citrus with. So you kind of have like the perfect package. The holidays are coming up too. It could be fun to gift citrus to friends. That could be a very fun gift. And thanks again to our newest members of the Growing Joy Garden Society. If you want to join us, it's jointhegardensociety.com. Right now, you know, we're still in this furnished rental that we've been in. It's like not yet my citrus journey, but when we move again, which I'm thinking is soon, I cannot wait to like get my citrus growing again. And I'm really going to follow up and kind of harass Danny about that blood orange because that's really what I want. But I'll keep you guys posted on what citrus I grow. And I would love for you to keep me posted on what citrus you grow if this episode gets you inspired and you take a shot at it. So until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing joy. Plant friend, thank you so much for tuning in today. If you like what you heard, make sure that you're subscribed to the show so you don't miss an episode. We have incredible episodes lined up in 2023, and I don't want you to miss one topic. And while you're subscribing, would you mind clicking over to the review section and leaving us a review? 
Reviews are tremendously helpful for the growth of the podcast, so I thank you in advance for helping this podcast reach as many planty earbuds as possible across the globe. If you're looking for more opportunities to grow as a plant parent with Growing Joy content, we've got a ton of free options for you. First, there's the Plant Parent Personality Test. It's so fun. It takes literally three minutes to complete. You take the test, you get your Plant Parent Personality Profile and a curated list of plants, projects, and podcast episodes that are right up your alley, tailored just for you, inspired by your results. The link is in the show notes. Make sure to let me know what your personality is after you take the test. If you're looking to uplevel your plant parent game, check out my website. We've got a bunch of free guides that you can download on topics like understanding natural light, which is actually a three-day worksheet, and nine ways to clean up your office if you need to bring a little bit of planty joy into your work life. And finally, I want to invite you to join the plantiest and kindest corner of the internet, my online garden society. It's both a web platform and an iOS and Android app. It allows our listeners to get together in an algorithm and troll-free online space to swap plant care tips, humble brag about plant wins, and get support when you have plant fails. We have monthly live planty show and tells on Zoom, which are so fun, and even have a living library of planty book recommendations sourced from our community. You can go to jointhegardensociety.com to grab your membership. And for anything else, plant friend, I am here for you. Feel free to drop me a line, whether you have an idea for an episode, an event, or maybe you're even a planty business interested in sponsoring the show. And of course, following me on Instagram and TikTok for daily planty silliness, musings, and tips is always recommended. You can find me across socials at Growing Joy with Maria. Thank you again so much for listening. It is truly my honor and life's delight to help you keep blooming and keep growing joy. Plant care is self-care on Growing Joy, the podcast. Make new plant friends, propagate knowledge, and grow some freaking joy. That's the motto of the Growing Joy Garden Society app and platform, otherwise known as the plantiest and kindest corner of the internet. If you've been an OG listener or a longtime listener, you might also know this app and platform as the Bloom and Grow Garden Party, but with the rebrand, we've rebranded it to the Growing Joy Garden Society. No trolls allowed, kind plant friends only. And if you haven't heard about the society yet, Plant Friend, you got to join. It's my online community that you can access via iOS or Android app or on your computer that I built to connect our international community of Plant Friends so we can all nerd out together about plants and celebrate our passion for our beloved plant babies. We have members literally all over the world. I'm so in love with this community of sweet plant friends. I can't say enough amazing things about them. But also there's a lot of really cool features about the app you might be interested in. There's dedicated hashtags to all sorts of different subsects of planty passions like houseplants, gardening, plant-inspired DIY projects, growing joy, plants and pets, and so many more. There's a plantrepreneur group. So if you're a planty entrepreneur and you want to connect with other planty entrepreneurs, you can join that group to connect and network. There's a plant swap section. Plus, the entire app, and this is my favorite part, is entirely searchable. So say you want to learn more about Hoya, you type the word Hoya into the search bar, and literally every post ever created about Hoya will pop up so you can click in, see what other people have been posting about Hoya and learn on your own and crowdsource hair information. It's so cool. But last but not least, it's an amazing way to support the show. Your monthly membership not only goes to sustaining the platform, but it also supports my team of editors, writers, and a community manager that help the world of Bloom and Grow keep growing. So come join us. All you got to do is go to jointhegardensociety.com and sign up for the community plan. Once again, you go to jointhegardensociety.com and click the community plan. Hot take plant friends, there is no one right starter plant. There, I said it. And you know what? While I'm at it, there are also no real plant killers in the world. There are just people who have not figured out their right plants for their lifestyle. This is why I created the free Plant Parent Personality Test, because Plant Friend, I want you to get thriving alongside your houseplants as quickly as possible, so I made this cutie little Plant Parent Personality Quiz that's totally free for you on my website to take the guesswork out of building your plant collection effortlessly and joyfully. 
After speaking to thousands of members in our community, I realized that there are about five key plant parent personalities, each one with their unique set of strengths, weaknesses, and a unique set of plants that thrive under their care. For example, a mindful plant parent, someone who wants to engage with their plants daily, use them in their morning routines. If someone gifted that plant parent a succulent and they watered it every day, that succulent would die immediately. However... That drought-resistant succulent is a perfect match for a low-key plant parent, which is someone who travels, has kids, is busy, doesn't have time to engage with their plants every day. They're looking to engage with their plants more like once a week or once every couple of weeks. In addition, obviously, to understanding your light and basic plant care that we provide on this podcast, Happy Plant Parenthood is all about discovering your personality and then picking the right house plants to go with it. It's that simple. No more stressing over your collection. So what plant parent personality type are you, plant friend? All you got to do to find out is take my free quiz on my website and let me know. You can access it at growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality. After taking the test, you'll get an email with a list of plants, podcast episodes, and planty projects that I think would light you specifically up like a full spectrum grow light. So once again, that's growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality for your free plant parent personality test results. Mm 